Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. That's right. It's time for the Eddie and Webby podcast. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to bust out some theme song action for you. Check it out. The Eddie and Webby show is the place to be. They're talking about beer and pickleball and technology. So if you didn't know, now you know. Because it's time for the Eddie and Webby show. On today's episode, Eddie and Webby see who can do more butterfly crunches in an hour. This is the Eddie and Webby podcast. All right, here we go. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, hey, how's it going? This is Webby, not Eddie. And I'm Eddie, and this is our 41st podcast. Oh, yeah. Episode number 41. This is awesome. 41, I can't believe it. Uh, we had an amazing first 40 episodes, which I would have never guessed we got past number six, but hey, here we are. Yes, here we are. I, I, I cannot believe it. I still can't believe it. Episode 40 was pretty epic. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to watch it, I recommend watching it, but not until after this one's over. Make sure you stay tuned and uh, check this one out. This is going to be a great episode that I can't wait to get started. Totally agree. We have a great guest. Uh, you guys are not going to want to miss hanging out with her tonight. Don't forget, guys, we are live on Facebook. We are live on YouTube. And we are live on Twitch for the three people that care. So very excited about that. We've gone up from one person to three people that actually watch us on Twitch. So that's pretty cool. That's right. Yes. The show is meant to be interactive. So you're going to want to get your comments and your questions together for our guests who are going to be announcing soon. And don't forget, guys, after the show, we're going to be going dark. And then we're going to be coming right back up. And what are we going to be doing? We're going to be jumping right into dinking around with Eddie and Webby. So if you guys want to be on the show, yes, we're talking about you and you have a smartphone or laptop, a uh, good solid internet connection, and preferably a headset um, with microphone, you might be able to come on. Yeah, you, you right there. <laughs> I'm talking, I'm talking to you. Yes. Uh, very excited for this guest. But before we bring this guest on, as I always like to ask my friend Webby here, what's going on in Twitter? Oh, wow. It's funny you ask. I've actually got Twitter up and running on my cellular telephone as we speak. <laughs> oh, really? And uh, Yeah. And uh, you're not going to believe this, but Twitter has been blowing up like crazy. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a few of the most recent comments that we have on our Twitter sphere. Um, here's one from Robert Uppy Jr., he says, Eddie and Webby, congrats on reaching episode 40 and having Tyson McGuffin on the show. It was my favorite episode yet. Nice. Thanks, well, Robert. Nice. Yeah, I agree. That was a great episode. He was a, a great guest. Definitely a lot of fun to have on. So thank you, Robert. Robert, um, he, he sent us a Twitter message before, didn't he? He has. Yeah, yeah. he has. He's been a longtime fan. Uh, I think it was one of, the, one of the early shows, as a matter yeah. of fact, that he uh, yeah. sent a comment on. So thanks for sticking with us, Robert. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Glad to hear we didn't scare everybody away that originally <laughs> tuned in. <laughs> uh, let's do another Twitter comment here. Here's one from Cold Stone Steve Houston. I really don't know how a couple of hacks like Eddie and Webby can manage to keep getting such great guests. I'm assuming bribery is involved. <laughs> yeah. That's not very nice. <laughs> we, we definitely bribed our next guest to be able to come on, so... Right. Yeah. I mean, bribery definitely is involved, but that's yeah. still not nice to call us out on it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, let's do one more comment here on Twitter. Here's one from GB Hendrix. Eddie and Webby, I absolutely love the pickleball anthem and your pickleball song parodies. When can we expect more music from you guys? Hmm, mm -hmm. that's actually a great question. Um, yeah, any anything to to share about that, Webby? Um, I can't reveal too much, but I do want to announce that we have a new original song in the works that's all that's all i'm gonna say that's where i'm gonna leave it is uh just we got something original in the works not not another parody i mean we have parodies in the work as well but the next song that we drop i have a feeling might be an eddie and webby original another one of those yeah we were uh we were inspired by our friends at platform files so yeah yeah no Excited doubt to see what we can do cool 
Well, thank you guys very much for your Twitter comments. Um, I think we should jump into our guest. What do you say? Yeah, that sounds like a perfect idea, and we should do that. Well, our guest tonight blasted her way onto the pickleball scene as fast and hard as her forehand drives. She's a former tennis player and coach who was the first to win the California Community College Women's Singles Championship while she was still in high school. She was featured in Sports Illustrated and recently was named MVP at the 2019 Pickleball Global Challenge Cup. Uh, she was representing the West Side. And now we can add master commentator to her resume. Please welcome to the show, Michelle Esquivel. What's going on, Michelle? Hey, Eddie and Webby. How's it going? Hey, we're great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me on the show. This is exciting. <laughs> yeah, we're excited. Uh, I think it's going to be awesome. You have such a cool story to share that we're really excited to get into. But where are you at right now, actually? Um, we just finished up the Atlanta Open. Um, so we are in Alpharetta, Georgia. And um, yeah, it was just such a great weekend of pickleball, uh, pro pickleball. Oh my gosh, it was such a good time. I think they call it like the fourth major in pickleball. So you have US Open, Nationals, and TOC. And then this is considered like the next one. So it was great. It was awesome. And uh, just hanging out uh, for a couple more hours before heading back to Florida. Nice. Well, yeah, we're super excited to jump into a lot of that. We want to talk about your background. We want to get into some of the tournaments you've been at and also talk a lot about the Atlanta Open. But what we typically like to do is kind of get our group loose here a little bit. And uh, what a better way to do that than to have a, a, a beverage. What do you think? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I was so ready for this. I thought this is like the coolest tradition of your show. <laughs> okay. We're, we're, nice. we're, we're glad you like it. Uh, why don't you go ahead and share with us what you're going to be drinking tonight? Well, I am a big fan of IPA since moving to Bend, Oregon, and I decided to get this local sweet water 420 extra pale ale. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this open. And what are you guys drinking? Well, first of all, before we do that, I love Sweetwater 420. I think that is one of the <gasps> greatest beers. I absolutely love that beer. Yay! Well, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Great uh, choice. I've never actually had it myself, so you'll have to let me know how it is. Yeah, it's, it's okay. a Okay, all right. Webby, what about you, man? Why, well, uh, yes, I do actually have a beer right here, and today I will be drinking one from Old Nation Brewing, and this one is called M43, but this one's got a little bit of a twist. It's M43 Tart Strawberry. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> interesting. You, you talked you talked about so that last time, didn't you? Is my absolute favorite New England IPA, and this is uh, one of their limited release versions of it. So I'm excited to drink it. Nice. Sounds like a good one. Uh, well, since you're drinking a New England IPA and Michelle's drinking a, an American Pale Ale, I thought I would do something that's kind of in between them, and that's a hazy IPA. So it's not quite to nice. the juicy level of a New England style, but it, it looks and drinks very similarly to it. So this is Sierra Nevada's Hazy Little Thing IPA. Nice. Very nice choice. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Have you, have you had any of these beers before, Michelle? I haven't. Again, like I'm new to IPA, so I'm, I'm down to try the hazy one and the one, the other one too. I'm so down to try it. Let me know how they are. We will do for sure. Yeah, the hazy IPAs and the New England IPAs cup. are delicious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Cool. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm. So, <laughs> Webby's going to be doing social media. So, all of you guys out there that are watching on Facebook, Twitch, or YouTube, go ahead and throw, throw your questions or comments in for, uh, for Michelle, and we'll be reading them off as we go through this. So Yeah, for sure. Bring those comments and questions, and uh, we'll read them. On the air. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> so, Michelle, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do this. <laughs> cool. Um, so I, I know I, I mentioned a lot of things in uh, when I introduced you here, but one of them that I really want to know a little bit more about 
um, because I can tell your style of play has some influence from it. That's that's your tennis background. Can you talk a little bit about what your career in tennis looks like? Uh, yeah, um, current tennis, I don't play it anymore, but it was definitely um, a huge part of my life. I started playing when I was five, and I played in high school. I played a junior SoCal uh, tennis tournaments. I did a little bit of pro um just little, little bit after uh, doing college tennis. And um, it was just a part of my everyday life. And so I decided to continue that with coaching. So I was coaching at a community college at Cypress College. And um, I was also teaching as a tennis instructor at a junior academy. So um, yeah, I just, I loved it so much. And then I met pickleball. (laughs) So I haven't played tennis in actually over a year, which is weird to me like very strange but i just love this it's a great addiction so what when did was the first time you picked up a pickleball paddle and smacked it around yeah um uh actually a fellow coach of mine ian liang who was my first mixed doubles partner introduced me um back in i want to say 2015 and uh he first introduced me to paddle tennis and it was cool but there's something about pickleball i don't know if it's a sound of the ball with a with a racket or with a paddle. I don't know what it was, but I was just having so much fun. And uh, a lot of people were like, stop smacking the ball, learn how to dink. <laughs> and I'm like, but you could smack the ball and it's um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, that's, it's just been awesome. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. So coming from that tennis background, and, and I noticed this when I play with beginners that are from tennis, they typically, they, they follow the tennis strategy, right? Where they want to stand at the baseline they want to whack the ball. What, how, how mm-hmm. far into your, your kind of, you know, growth in pickleball, did you start realizing that thinking is a strategy and start adding that to your tool belt in addition to your, your hard drives? Oh, I was so stubborn. I was <laughs> stubborn for the longest time. I think I still am. I really, um, but it took me. It, it took me up until maybe like the last year. So after playing for three years, um, just really understanding this uh, strategy. And luckily I had really good guidance from uh, Ian's cousin, Tao. Uh, I don't know how to say his last name. I'm, I'm going to, how do you say it? Thung Van. Thung Van. And uh, yeah, he's, he's a great uh, pickleball player from Colorado. And he really like drilled it into me how to dink, how to step into a dink. Uh, when to initiate and um, I heard it and I and I knew what he was saying but I still for the longest time didn't want to do it and uh, now that I've really applied that to my game I've seen um, a lot of growth and um, it's just been getting better and better I think (laughs) yeah I mean that I guess that was gonna be my next question you kind of answered it a little bit but did you notice that your your ability to compete went way up when you started to learn the soft game and and combine it with the, you know, the solid hard game that you already had? Yeah, it's still coming together. It's still coming together because right now there's not really a right or wrong time to initiate, Um, you know what I mean? Or speed up the game uh, as long as you're maybe deceptive with it. But um, yeah, I just, I've been feeling better into going to the dink, into this quick exchange, back to resetting. Oh my gosh, resetting is a whole nother thing too. But um, I've been watching the top players and really trying to recognize like what kind of patterns they've been using. And I've been trying to drill on those kind of things and implement it in my own game. Um, But everyone has such a cool, unique style, you know? So um, again, there's no right or wrong timing. It's just kind of figuring out what works for you and what opponents you're playing against. All right. I, so you, I hope that made sense. <laughs> no, no, it totally makes sense. Cause that's, that's one of the things that I, I try and instill, I, I, I play with a lot of people that they don't want to dink at all. And I'm trying to instill in them like, Hey, I get it. You're, you're good at your drives, but you want to know what dinking is a strategy because every time you drive, when I connect that ball or when somebody else who knows what they're doing is able to block it and drop it into the kitchen, you're just giving them an opportunity to use your pace against you. So it's like, get up to the line, learn how to dink. It might be uncomfortable for you at first, but I guarantee the first time you get into a 20 dink rally with, with your opponents, you're going to realize very quickly that number one, this is exciting. And number two, it's a great strategy. 
Oh, it's and and the thing is, the better players get into the dinking game because they have more control and the kitchen is so small and you have such little space to work with that you're going to see it with the better players but um and and again i'm stubborn and some people are so stubborn that they don't want to get into that game and i get it and i respect it but the better you get you have to understand how to dink and what you're trying to do with the dinks and how to get your opponents out of position it's just if you want to get better you're going to have to do it (laughs) okay so you you did become um, you are an IPTPA certified certified instructor, right? Yes, I am. How how long ago did you get that? Um, I actually got that this past year um, in 2018 um, when I decided that I wanted to do teaching and coaching with pickleball. So um, I decided to get my IPTPA certification and teach over at the pickleball zone in uh, Bend, Oregon. So it's a brand new facility over there. It's a state of the art, gorgeous, beautiful indoor uh, facility with outdoor court surface. They have eight courts and it's great because um, when it's cold out, there's a place to play and bend. And um, so I decided to get my certification and teach lessons there, do rating sessions. Um, I call it kitchen clinics, uh, learning how to dink. I do all sorts of fun stuff over there with uh, my coworker Lisa Palsik, who's also a head instructor there. Okay. How so? How long have you been with them for? Um, I the facility just opened up in October, so I've been. The, how long is that? <laughs> uh, yeah, with seven a year. Eight, eight months, nine months, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. seven to eight months, and um, it's been really cool seeing the facility kind of. Like there's so many mem- great, great members there and there's so many beautiful people and um, that just want to learn and get better. And um, it's such a cool crew over there in Bend. And um, yeah, it's and it's only been seven months and I feel like connected in such a, in a big way, positive way. So it's been really neat there. Okay. Well, wow, so, uh-oh. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell how excited you were about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. I mean, it's, it sounds like a cool area. Obviously that's, you know, very close to where pickleball originated. So there's definitely a great pickleball presence in that part of the country. Um, and you know, I guess that's my other question when it comes to becoming an instructor, like, do you feel like you saw also an improvement in your game when you became an instructor? Yeah, because I started, um, I started like telling people things and I'm like, why don't I do the things that I tell people? (laughs) You know what I mean? Uh, (laughs) like patience and, you know, uh, drill, make sure that you drill, make sure that you practice these things. So I, (laughs) so of course I started doing those things and, um, yeah, it, it, my game has actually gone a lot better because I've been on the court every single day now. So um, when you see the ball more and you feel the ball more, you just become more comfortable with it and you're able to step on the court and, and feel like you're at home, right? So uh, teaching has definitely been a huge influence in why my game stepped up, definitely. All right. Nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Webby, uh, you got anything going on in the socials there? Yeah, we've actually got a great question here from Daniel J. Howard Pickleball. He says, <laughs> Michelle, are you currently a better player or better instructor? Ooh. Ah, Ooh. DJ. What's up, DJ? Um, uh, well, I went to school so I could become a, a teaching or a teacher or a professor, right? So I have a huge passion for it. I... I excite, it really excites me when I see my students excel or like it clicks for them. Like I get so pumped up over that because I remember the time where it clicked for me when I was able to dink or when I was able to do a strategy. Um, so uh, I want to say I'm a better teacher. <laughs> um, I have a lot of patience and I, I feel like I have a good personality. I'm, I could easily get along with anyone I feel. And um, I just, I just, I love teaching. I'm, I'm a big fan of people getting better and all these students are like sponges. They want to know everything. So, um, it's, it's so cool that people would come to me and ask me for advice and I'm, I'm more than welcome to give them everything that my, all of my knowledge, right? 
whether it uh, be coming from tennis or my experiences during the matches, um, just watching pickleball. So I think uh, I think I'm a better teacher. <laughs> All right, DJ. All right, that was a great question. <laughs> great question, DJ. And speaking of DJ, I've got uh, I've got something to to talk about regarding DJ a little later on. We'll get to that later. Uh, but everybody, go ahead and uh, keep the questions coming. That was a great one. Yeah. Can Love I that. add something? Of course, yeah, for sure. Is it okay? If, yeah, cool. So uh, DJ and I are going to be teaching a level up camp um, over in St. Louis coming up. So um, I think that was a trick question. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah, I think that was a trick question. But thanks, DJ. <laughs> when, when is that coming up, Michelle? Um, I believe it's coming up in, I want to say, July. July... I'm not, I'm not too sure of the dates, but um, I'm also teaching uh, with Engage. So I'm doing a lot of camps. So they're all in my head. They're all scrambled right now. So, um, but I believe it's it's either in July or believe it or not, September. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's either July or September. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my brain works. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I got to say, though, like any, if, if anybody sees – that a, a level up camp is coming in your area and you've ever even considered it for the, the like, if you've ever thought about it in any way, I, I highly recommend doing it. Um, the, the instructors uh, are top notch. So definitely if you have, if you've ever thought about doing it, it's coming to your area, do it, just do it. Absolutely. Have you done it? Um, so I haven't done the camp, but I have uh, recently got some training from one of the instructors and uh, that's kind of ah. what I'm going to talk about a little bit later, but Everybody's going to have to wait to hear all that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, there, there's a level up coming to um, Key West, I think, in September or whatnot that uh, I'm going to I might try to get down to as well. So that'd be fun. Oh, DJ nice. j did awesome. just add uh, DJ said end of August. So there's the answer to that one is uh, end of August. So I was entirely wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so July, <laughs> September, it's right in the middle. You're good. It's right in the middle. Yeah, You're fine. Close enough. I knew it was close somewhere enough. in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's, it's got to be hard to keep a schedule like yours. That's for sure. Absolutely. It's tough. Every weekend is either a tournament or some kind of camp going on. Um, it's very rare now that I have a free weekend, but I wouldn't spend it doing anything else. I love, I love pickleball. <laughs> nice. Um, we actually did just get a, a new question here. It's a, a really good one from our good buddy, Matt Loria. He says, if you could have a drink with anyone that plays or has played pickleball, celebrity or Ooh. pro or podcast host, who would you choose and why? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wow. That's such a good question. Oh my gosh. I can't even, um, you know, I feel like I've, I've actually had a couple beers with some of the people that I really respect from the game already. But if I could, I would probably sit down with, uh, Wesley Gabrielson just because he, uh, from everyone that I've talked to, um, he is the most respected uh, from the game. I uh, just, he's such a nice guy. Uh, he's such a great player. And he also has a lot of history and knowledge of like, who's been around in the game and stuff. So it would most likely probably be him. That's a great nice. question. That was a great nice question. Work. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, that Matt. So that, was a, <laughs> that was a great answer. And we did actually just get another comment here on YouTube. Katrina Davison says, love that your guest has a love for teaching. And I agree. That's awesome. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah, I just, I, I really do have a passion for it. And I did for tennis, but um, I did everything I wanted to do with, with tennis. And uh, when you have a new passion for something, you give it like 100%. And so um, when I teach, it's just so much fun. And I have so much energy. And then people get energy. And then it's kind of almost like a party. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. Like that, that's one thing I love about it is how much people are willing to share, how much everybody wants to have fun out on the courts. I mean, you even see it during some mm -hmm. of these competitions, right? People doing a little trash talk for fun. You, you, you kind of oh, see that great. the pickleball culture contains all aspects of everything you talked about right there. Yeah, absolutely. and the trash talking is so good. <laughs> I saw a lot of that 
this weekend in Atlanta and it was so fun. Like, uh, it was, who was it? It was Jeff Warnick, Adam Stone versus Dave Weinbach and Kyle Yates, which happened to be my favorite match of this weekend. And it was so neat because they played uh, three out of five uh, games, right? Or best of five games. So there was trash talking the whole time. Um, and you pick up some cues like uh, body bag is when like someone gets hit, obviously. And Jeff Warnick will call it out like body bag. And um, it, it's just so much fun seeing like those exchanges across the net. And it's all in good fun because at the end, everyone's cool. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just uh, you see a lot of inside jokes uh, with the pro players because we see each other almost every month at these tournaments. So um, there's a lot of inside jokes and a lot of messing around and whatnot. So, um, but it's really neat. <laughs> yeah, we definitely heard a lot of that this weekend through the commentary you guys were doing. Um, why don't we jump into the Atlanta Open here a little bit? So, sure. You you played uh, women's doubles and mixed doubles this weekend, right? Yeah, I had the greatest opportunity to play with two awesome, awesome players. So Jesse Irvine, um, she's she's awesome. Um, she's She just picked up a paddle in November, and she's just, like, showing up to these tournaments like she's been playing for years. Um, she's aggressive. She's, she's smart. Uh, she's just um, amazing. She's willing to stay in the point. She's a fighter. Um, we played pretty well considering our first time. Um, and then I played with Steve Deacon, who uh, also our first time playing together. And uh, we actually, uh, one of like my uh, biggest accomplishments up to date is taking Simone and Kyle to three games. Like that to me, like is a big deal just because I admire and respect them so much. Um, we didn't get to play Matt and Lucy who won uh, gold today, but um, like that's like I, every opportunity I have to play against the best, I'm just like so thrilled and honored. And to be able to take them to three games and give them a somewhat of a challenge to me is gratifying and it makes me want to work harder and do better. So um, Steve Deacon and I, my Canadian buddy, um, we did pretty good today. <laughs> That's cool. So when you find a partner, let's start with Mixed, for example, at a tournament like the Atlanta Open. Like, What are you looking for? Like, What are some of those key things that you feel like, hey, we really got a shot at this? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so when when I'm looking for a partner, um, I like someone that I feel is very clutch or very just solid. You know, um, they could dink, they could you know do ex quick exchanges, they could drive. Um, they have a diverse game because um, against different opponents, you have to have that diversity. You can't just play one way. So um, they they usually don't have a strength they have many strengths right yeah. so um i got to play with uh and i also like playing i'm one of those girls who i'm sure like to play on the left um which is my forehand in the middle and i i know it's bad so i've been trying to play on the right more um but i love i love playing with tyler loom um we played great in centralia and that matchup was really good and he fired me up and um he was just awesome on the court like we were on the same page so when you find someone you're connected with, um, like who's on the same page, you get each other's styles of game, that's pretty much what I'm looking for, right? Um, but yeah, he was a great partner. Steve Deacon's awesome. Um, I played with a lot of amazing players, but sometimes you just click with someone, right? Your styles complement mm -hmm. each other or your strengths complement each other. And so, um, yeah, that's kind of kind of what I look for. Not too sure what other people think about that, but um, that's kind of important to me. Okay. So if let, let's yeah. say, and, and those are all great reasons, right? I, I know I, I like to play with partners that, uh, are very, they're uplifting, right? They, they're going to call mm -hmm. me out. Like if I'm, if I'm screwing up, they're going to be like, Hey man, yeah. let's get those drops. Right. But at the same point, they're not going to be huffing and puffing every time, you know, I, I put one into the net oh. or, you know, and, and that's even yeah. at my level, I can't even imagine at your level, how much, how much more that can affect you because it doesn't happen as often for me. It's like if I if I drop shot, you know, if I hit seventy five percent of my drop shots in a tournament, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with that number. Yeah, at your level, that would probably be a little bit more discouraging. So, have you ever? I don't. I don't want to ask you about anything like specific, but what's your thoughts on that? 
Um, I agree. Like, I've I've had I've been a, that person myself where I'm like huffing and puffing, and I quickly recognize like that's not that's not I don't want to be that partner because it's also been done to me. So like one of the things personally I worked on is being encouraging and being like, but also being upfront, but in a positive way, right? So um, yeah, that's a, that plays a huge role into your partnership. So I, I've played with a few people that it's been discouraging and um, you know, you keep, that's where you find another partner. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. you, you wish it, you wish it could have worked out, but I need that positive reinforcement from my partner because we're in this together battling you know, and you need someone to just pump you up and, and be positive. So, um, but when you're, when you're competing, sometimes you just can't uh, hide it because um, you're just so into it and you care so much, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can understand, I can understand it either way, being the person that's like taking that from someone and then being the person that's actually doing it. Yeah. Um, so... I understand. I just get it. I'm, I'm understanding. Um, but yeah, if someone's like super negative, like I, I don't think I'd probably partner with that person again. You know, yeah, that would that would be really tough. Fun. Yeah. And especially because it's yeah. going to stop you from having fun out there. So um, right, the sp right. speaking of having fun and you, you said that you like to be on the left side for your forehand position. Um, I want to show a quick little video clip. This is something we like to do when we have some oh. of our our pro guests on. So you know what? I'm just gonna okay. go ahead and roll it. Today in yeah. singles, felt like we gave a couple good tips, and it was fun to kind of. I know Michelle's a coach too, and it's fun to kind of work in that capacity as a team. And I've seen plenty of East players coaching their players, for sure, giving good insight. So yeah, I remember Frank Anthony Davis going over to Vivian uh, during her singles match at some point, and uh, also uh, a couple other people. So yeah, you're right. Boy, that is just so impressive by Michelle. She's Boy. powerful. A little uh, pickle thug life that action so from the good. from the pickleball global oh challenge cup there. Gosh. Oh yeah, that is so good. <laughs> you got me cracking up over here. Oh my god, that <laughs> that's what so we were hoping good. for. That's the reaction we like to see. So, <laughs> oh, that's such a good clip. I love that. Can I like? I could go back and save that. Right, that's hilarious. I, I will oh absolutely send you that clip. You you can you can do whatever. <laughs> whatever you want uh, from it. But, but obviously that, you know, that was oh, from the, man. that was from the pickleball global challenge cup, which was the week right before the U S open, which I actually, I happened to, to be at. Uh, and I have a couple of things I wanted to share with that. But one of the first things is, as you guys know, it was East versus West. And I'm pretty sure you were the biggest cheerleader for the West because 15 minutes wouldn't go by and I'd hear West side. <laughs> me that was me yeah can, can we get yeah, a west side um, here can we get a west side west side yeah. <laughs> oh that's so good yeah i mean um being a collegiate coach and being involved in college tennis like one of the greatest things about being on a team is supporting each other and um in, in a positive way right not in any disrespectful way so you know like i got my team together and whenever like there was some epic point or epic battle I had to throw that out there and it just became one of the things for uh, or one of the chants but uh, we got together as a group and then so one of them was west side best side so mm -hmm. it was just uh it was and that's the thing it's so much fun that event was so great the global event um at Bonita Springs uh it was so much fun because you're you're on a team and it's better to be on a team than solo, right? So, um, yeah, it was it was so much fun. That event was so great, and it was indoors, which mm -hmm. I don't mind. And um, yeah, it was such it's such a unique experience for me, and it was very memorable and very fun. And I love that clip so much. It's so <laughs> funny. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that was such an amazing event. Ah, oh god, another sorry, one. Again. You're good. Another exciting moment. Yeah, another exciting moment. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, we, so we actually, we have a couple more pictures from that event because I, I had a blast there and I thought it was oh, awesome boy. and I thought you just absolutely uh -huh. crushed it. But here we go. Here's one of you and, oh, look, you're right in front oh, of the, the Eddie and Webby banner Eddie there. Eddie and Webby! Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Um, That's something, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, I was, we were so happy to have our, 
our banner up there, which was cool. Um, yeah. we, you also, so the, the last night, the very last matches, my wife and I were both there and we actually stuck around and we went out on the courts when you guys were, you know, getting your, your award and kind of getting celebrated for winning or whatnot, which I think I have a quick mm -hmm. little picture of here. Oh yeah. There's the West side. <laughs> yeah. Um, nice. but, but another thing oh, that I wanted that's to, so cool. Oh yeah, it it was awesome to to be a part of that. You guys, you all seemed so happy, and uh, you know, obviously your performance was outstanding. So that was really cool. Aww, but thank you. There's something else awesome that happened that uh, that I, I I don't mean to like rush this, but I'm so excited to be able to talk with you about, and that is that you got the MVP for that tournament, and that or for yeah for that <laughs> that cup. Like, how how amazing was that? Wow. Um, it was, it was, a. Uh, oh, that's so cool that you said that. Sorry. It kind of got to me right now. Cause, uh, I like in the pickleball world, you go from one thing to the other. Cause right after the event was just the U S open. And right after that, and you know, it just keeps going and going. So to, to reflect on this right now is actually really cool, but it, it was, it was, um, it was a, an honor to be the MVP. Um, I just, uh, I think I play better in a team environment because I really want to like represent for not only myself. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I just, I, I played great. I was very focused during that event. Um, I had great partners. Um, there was great competition all around. I was exposed to amazing, a diverse group, which I met so many cool people during that. And, um, it was just so, it was just so neat, you know, um, to be named MVP, but, uh, yeah, I, I didn't realize, like, I was winning all my matches. I didn't really think of it like that. I was just, like, going from one game to the next, and then when people were mentioning the MVP and Lindsay Newman and I were, like, in the runnings for MVP, I was like, oh, I didn't even realize, like, they were handing that out, and I didn't even, that wasn't even, like, a goal of mine. I just wanted to perform well, and just ended up happening, and, and I'm just, it was great. Like, I, I was it was awesome and I got to take the trophy home and <laughs> so it's at home right now and it's just such a it was such a neat experience definitely <laughs> yeah that, and that was so well deserved I mean I I got the chance to uh to see some of your matches live and I mean you know how close we were we I was like 10 feet away from right. you as you were just crushing it but anything that I didn't get to watch live I was pretty much watching in the background of the live stream and um I think that is well deserved and and I also think that <laughs> It's so cool how you kind of have this like really nice emotional reaction to it. I actually have a picture yeah. that I took personally <laughs> on uh, yeah, on the court and this was right after you were uh you were named MVP uh and and you can tell like you know everybody just got done celebrating how awesome it was and and there you are kind of bashfully accepting uh, accepting that award. I I am very bashful when it comes to uh attention like that because uh i just i don't know what it is but uh I, I i don't like talking about myself so i'm glad you're asking all the questions <laughs> and you're you're posting all this stuff i i yeah it's just uh i don't know i just go out there and try my best and i have fun doing it and so yeah it's to me it's like kind of like i'm getting recognized for having fun and and just competing like that's kind of neat you know like to yeah. me it's it's a uh, it's kind of it's really neat and uh i might not react like in a oh you know i should be getting this or whatever but um yeah i'm just it, it's a huge honor um i didn't realize i had done it and i did it and it's kind of it'll always be there you know when it, i could always look back and be like wow like this event was epic and i was an mvp like that's so cool you know um yeah definitely a highlight in my pickleball career for sure for sure yeah I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, if, if you're not going to toot your own horn, um, we're going to toot it for you because I honestly mean it. Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of yours. I, I think your pickleball game is great. I think you have an amazing uh, energy about you when you're out on the court. And obviously you're very talented with pickleball. But one of the thing I wanted to talk about with you about the Atlanta Open is I didn't realize you had a talent for commentary as well. But man, <laughs> you and Jay Gizmo, you guys crushed it you were talking about the the gizmo and michelle show 
let's do it. Like, I mean that, oh, yeah, my you, God. you guys did awesome. I'm, I was like, this is great. I had so much fun listening to you guys and watching those matches. Oh my gosh. It was like, if you're watching it and you're going to do some commentary, you, I mean, we can hold back our excitement for these matches. Everyone performed so well at the Atlanta open and there was such great matchups and like, it's just right there. And like, it's like, you're, Oh man, it's just so cool. And so like to be able to give live feed to the audience and to be able to express like how we feel about the points, it's just like, mm. it just, it's very natural. You know, it's very, very natural. And thank you so much for that. That's so, that's so nice of you to say that. <laughs> so yeah. I appreciate it. We're just uh, trying to give the pickleball world um, a little, uh, I guess, like personality, right? Mm-hmm. And you definitely did. I think it was cool. It felt very natural. But one thing that I like, because I, I had the opportunity to do commentary at the Florida Grand Slam. And fortunately, mm -hmm. Josh Jay was there with me. And so he was able to talk a lot about the technical stuff. And I was just was a babbling idiot. Uh, but <laughs> what 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 I loved about your, you know you is that you were actually able to provide a lot of that technical insight into what was going on in addition to just having a fun, enjoyable, engaging personality shining through. So that was a really cool blend. Oh, thank you. And and that's kind of like, well, what I do as a teacher is I analyze um, like the players, right? I analyze what they could do better or mm -hmm. what they're doing and like uh, how they could maybe change up the game. So uh, it's like, that's already there. So being able to express it, um, it's just easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, giving that insight and I could be wrong, you know, and there's different views and that's why Gizmo was such a good counterpart because he brought up some things that I necessarily wouldn't have thought of. And so I thought that we both kind of were able to do, do it right, I guess. So it was, it was fun doing that with him this weekend. It was really cool. And Carl Schmidt like provided that, um, opportunity to us. So I wanted to thank him and letting us uh, do the live feed for pro pickleball. <laughs> yeah, cool that guy. was great. And, and, and I agree with Eddie, like you, you guys were a great commentary team. You just, you had such great chemistry, um, very entertaining to listen to. And what I absolutely love is the fact that you and Gizmo both, <laughs> like you had just been competing in the event and it just shows yeah. like how passionate and how much you guys love pickleball. You were competing in the event and then you went right, straight to the announcer booth so you could commentate this uh live stream i mean that, that's awesome yeah well it's it's it for us it's just so easy and uh yeah we did have like this good chemistry like we were just vibing off of each other and just um we were laughing the whole time we were having a beer mm -hmm. <laughs> like we were just having such a good time and uh it's it, it was just so fun the guy cracks me up he's funny He's funny. So uh, he was saying some stuff I couldn't I, like I had to step away from the live feed just to like laugh hysterically because I didn't want to do it into the mic. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm glad you I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. That's good. That's a good thing. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff, absolutely. <laughs> Very good stuff. Cool. Um, so, Michelle, I know that you have a long drive home tonight and I have a list of like a hundred things that I wanted to be able to talk with you about, but I know you, I know you have, you have to drive home. So how about we make it? What deal? time is it? It's already 7 PM. No way. That yeah. goes by so fast. <laughs> I know. I know. We, we, we want to have you on again in the future so we can talk more about this. Uh, what do you think about that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, you guys are so great and easy to talk to. Oh, you guys are awesome. I love what you're doing. Thank you. We, we love it. Just like how, <laughs> how, you know, you, you really enjoy doing the commentary. Uh, it's definitely something that we're passionate about and we love to do. Um, so thank you for that very much. Appreciate it. Uh, Absolutely. But before you go, we, we want to give you an opportunity, uh, to share what's going on with you. I, I know that you were recently, uh, you recently became an engaged signature pro and you have a lot of upcoming, uh, tournaments and things going on. So we wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of share with the world, the thousands and thousands of listeners and viewers out <laughs> there, uh, what's going on with you and, and how they can follow you in your journey. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you could follow me on Facebook. You just uh, search me, Michelle Esquivel. I, I'm pretty much a, a Facebook junkie. 
I like to post uh, all my results or whatever I'm doing. It's on there. So um, pictures and uh, I share a lot of things um, pickleball related. So go ahead and find me there. Um, as far as the Engage uh, Signature Pro Player, I'm going to be teaching a lot of camps with Engage and uh, uh, in different areas. So make sure you follow EngagePickleball.com. Um, and you guys could find the camps there. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have some great instructors on our team. We have Steve Kennedy, Gigi Lamaster, uh, Robert Elliott. Um, we have Marcin Ritzpeski. Like he's Ooh. awesome. Um, yeah. So we have we have great instructors, um, and we have great camps. It's usually three day camp. Um, also, I'm uh, just working with Muscle MX, who is one of my sponsors. It's um, I use their CBD bomb and it helps me with uh, muscle soreness and stuff like that. So if you want any information, again, you could just find that all on my page on facebook.com and just search Michelle Esquivel. That's it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so cool. Nice. This was a lot yeah. of fun, Michelle. Seriously. Thank you so much for I spending know. your time. Uh, this was, this was great. Like I, I feel so bummed, but I, I know you got to go and you got to, you got a long know. drive. So. I know that went by way too fast. Oh yeah. man. Yeah, I did. The time flew yeah. by way, way too fast. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, thank you so much for having me. And I, again, I love what you guys do. Thank you for providing this to the people who want to know more about pickleball. And uh, you guys are so much fun. I love the beer and <laughs> just chatting with you guys. So great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. That really means a lot. We love what you're doing yeah. for pickleball. Keep doing it. And I can't wait to see all the other great stuff you're going to be doing here. Yay. Sounds good. Thanks guys. All right. Thanks, Michelle. We'll see you. All right. Have a good night. All right. All right. Okay. Bye. <laughs> wow. Another yeah, awesome, awesome guest. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Definitely. Yeah. The time went by way too fast. I wish we could have talked to her for longer, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll just have to have her on again in the future. Um, very fun, very informative, uh, awesome. Very awesome. Yes. Uh, definitely. Uh, like I, like I said, I love what she's doing for, for the sport. I think, uh, she has such a great energy and passion and it comes through super psyched to see what she's going to be doing here in the near future, because man, the, when you see her out on that court, like she knows exactly how to crush that ball and has, has done pretty, pretty good, pretty good, pretty, pretty good. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I haven't I haven't had the pleasure of seeing her play in person, um, but hopefully that'll change soon. Um, but yeah, I definitely love uh, watching the live streams and listening to her do commentary along with our buddy Gizmo. Definitely mm -hmm. great stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, I think instead of the Eddie and Webby show, it should be the Gizmo and Michelle show. Yeah, I, I would gladly uh, resign and let them take over because it would yeah. probably be a much better show. It'd be a much better show. <laughs> so much better. <laughs> People that actually know how to play pickleball and know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it, that when, the time that I did commentary and I didn't have Josh J and Carl's like, all right, dude, start start doing the commentary. And I was like, all right, here we go, guys. And oh, great shot, Simone. Like I didn't know what in the hell to say. And Josh was over there like, oh, that's the, the 78th net cord shot that uh simone was able to return like i just yeah when, when you get somebody at that level they can provide so much more technical knowledge that i just like to sit there and be the color commentary dummy right yeah if i was there i would be like oh uh simone hit the ball oh <laughs> kyle just hit the ball oh they oh hit the net point they scored a point <laughs> that would be the extent of my commentary <laughs> oh that would be great Actually, I kind of want you to commentate now just so I can see <laughs> how bad it could get. It'd be the absolute worst thing ever. Oh, man. Uh, no, she was, that was awesome. Great, great interview. Um, I, I really do hope she comes on again. That would be really cool to have her come on the show. Oh, for, again, sure. for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So after that, man, I feel like what else can we do with this show that can compete with that? Well, I feel like I feel like nothing can compete with that, but we do actually have a couple interesting videos to show. That's right. As you guys know, for the last two podcasts, we have had the pickleball tip of the week where we give you the pickleball tip and just the tip. Um, the first week we talked uh, about foundation 
and some things that I can improve on when it comes to trying to get to that 4.0 level with um, with Tony from Into Pickle. Um, last week, we talked about how I need to shorten up my backswing a little bit and not do so much of a kind of like a, what do you call it, a, a curl shot? Uh, and this week, I thought it'd be a good idea, Webby, for you and I to actually watch one of his most recent videos uh, and just you and I kind of talk about it a little bit and how we think that we could uh, learn from it and apply it to our games. What do you think about that? All right. Yeah, that sounds like a real good idea. I love oh. it. Okay. Uh, well, I want to set up the video a little bit before I play it. So uh, I don't know about you, but one of the reasons that I'm so excited about working with Tony from Into Pickle is that I've watched every single one of his videos and I've gotten something from every single one of his videos. And I feel like his approach is one that is very topical. It's, uh, it's you know, it you can apply it directly uh, and, and they help immediately in your games. And, you know, one of the things that, that I notice is there's a lot of people who like to smack the ball really hard at the kitchen line at you. Uh, and the, 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 the higher I get, the more and more that's happening to me. What do you agree with that? Are, are you finding that too, Webby? Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And, uh, and yeah, his videos are great. I know numerous people that will tell me like, Oh, you got to see this video. And it's one of Tony's videos in he, yeah, the stuff he covers is great. It's great content. Yeah. It, it's a, such good stuff. Uh, he, he recently had one on that I thought was really cool, uh, where he had Lucy Kitcher on and they talked about block volleys, right? So when somebody's hitting the ball at you, um, what is the right way to be able to approach that shot? And, uh, what I thought I would do is I would show you just a, a shortened segment of it and then you and I can discuss. So I'm going to go ahead and play the video. All right, let's take a look at, uh, the volley in action here at Lucy's volley. Let's look at Lucy's uh, preparation for the volley. First thing I want you to notice is how her weight is balanced. Her shoulders are over her toes, giving her a nice balanced position. Her paddle is ready and out in front, waiting for the ball. Uh, she's using her off hand here to assist the paddle preparation. Her left hand is helping basically hold the paddle stable. And her eyes are on the ball, so she's engaged and ready for the ball. And she's focused on what's happening, but at the same time, she's calm. Notice how her body's in a calm position here. She's not tense and not jittery before she hits the ball. Let's look at the volley in motion now. Notice how Lucy brings the paddle back very little or almost no backswing on it. She just puts the paddle and gets it ready to hit the ball. And notice how she also separates her left hand from her paddle. So she does as she pulls her left hand away. You can choose here whether you want to hit a two-handed. Some people hit a two-handed uh, backhand volley there. That's fine. If you want to hit a one-handed backhand volley, you want to do it the way Lucy does, which is to pull your offhand away. By pulling the offhand away, you create balance in your shot between the two hands. And then you'll see how she basically finishes the shot with a little tiny motion forward and then gets reset back to the ready position. From the front, you can see how compact the stroke is. You can also see how Lucy keeps her balance and uses her offhand to create a good weight distribution on the stroke. I wanted to chat with Lucy for a little bit about the block volley and her techniques and her thoughts on the block volley. So Lucy, let me ask you on the, the block volley that you execute so well. Uh, what are you thinking or what how are you approaching the shot when you have somebody who you know is going to absolutely blister that ball how do you get ready to receive that shot yeah so um a lot of people as soon as they see somebody wind up who they know can hit really hard the first thing they do is panic and it's completely the opposite you really have to relax and just be focused on everything they're doing watching the ball watching their paddle watching their shoulder shoulder angle how they're standing and you have to be patient and wait till they hit it, but at the same time, you have to almost predict from their body language what they're gonna do with that ball. You actually have a lot more time than you think when the, you know, when the player hits the ball. If you're relaxed, you have plenty of time to get to the right position in order to block the ball. You always want the ball to hit the ground before it gets to the other player. Again, Lucy Kitcher has a, a fantastic block volley, so if you can take some of what she's saying and bring it into your game, your game will definitely improve, so give it a try. Well, there we go. That was uh, Tony and Lucy. Tony with Into Pickle and Lucy Kitcher. You guys all know her. Very nice. Yeah, such always such great topics and great information that they cover on there. And that uh, that is no exception. That is another great one. 
Yeah, I agree. And you know, one of the things I do, um, I have the, the pickle by lobster. I just call it my lobster machine. And one of the drills that I like to do mostly with it is the block volley shot where I'll set it to 60 miles an hour, I'll throw it at the baseline, and I'll just fire it a few inches over the net. And my goal is just to get comfortable with putting my paddle out and blocking it. I, I usually try and do two to the baseline and then one in the kitchen. Two to the baseline and one in the kitchen. Um, and my confidence at the line has has gone up significantly since I started doing that. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I've. that's, that's one thing I've got to get into doing drills. That's one thing I've never never really done. And, uh, I, I need to, I definitely need to, if I want to increase my skills. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, I definitely think that it's a, a skill set that's going to help us to improve our game, something that I'm continuing to work at. But, uh, to me, it's just not swing at it. Like to me, like the first step is just don't swing at the ball. If they're hitting it hard at you, don't swing. That's the stupidest thing you can do. Just, just get your paddle out. And even if, even if you're not putting it in the perfect position, like that's just step one, just get your paddle out there and let it, let it go where it needs to go. Yeah, for sure. And that's abs- it's actually uh, one of the things that was covered in uh, the thing I teased a little bit earlier. I don't know if you remember me saying that I uh, had a little bit of training recently, but that exact thing was covered because that's something that I do. I swing when I don't need to swing. Okay. So you want to talk more about what this uh, this training that you're talking about is? Uh, sure. I don't mind if I do. So, uh, earlier, uh, our buddy Daniel J. Howard pickleball, uh, left, or he asked a, a great question for Michelle and, uh, they are both, uh, pickleball instructors. And I actually met up with DJ Howard, uh, a couple days ago, as a matter of fact, spent mm. a couple hours with him and man, I got to tell you that it was, that was awesome. That was like two of the best hours I've spent learning about pickleball. Um, for anybody that's ever considered or even thought of doing training, or even if you haven't thought of doing any kind of training, you've got to do it. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's so different than, than watching videos. I mean, the, watching the videos are great, definitely a great thing to do. But to have somebody there, an instructor with you, and have you do the things that you see in the video and then give you the real-time feedback of like, you know, actually, you should try this instead of that or uh just right. stuff like that it, it's so valuable i mean I, I i can't even begin to describe how much i learned just in that two hours i spent with dj and uh i actually put together a little uh teaser video of a series that i plan to uh, work on i know you've got the uh the series there with uh tony from into pickle i uh, i felt a little left out so i wanted <laughs> to start a series of my own with some some of uh some other Additional pickle tips, if you will. <laughs> All right. I so like if it. uh if you have it ready, I'd say roll the clip. Oh hey, how's it going? I'm pretty excited because today for the first time ever I'm gonna get some high level pickleball coaching. And that is thanks to this man right here. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to the one and only Daniel J. Howard Pickleball. How's it going, man? Great. Thanks for agreeing to meet up with me here. Sure thing. So how long have you been doing pickleball coaching? About four years. Nice. Yep. Uh, so a lot of you know Eddie has been working with Tony from Into Pickle with the objective of becoming a benchmark 4.0 player by the end of the year. And while I do have a similar objective, I actually have one primary goal in mind at this point in time, and that is to finally defeat Eddie in the next Eddie versus Webby match. And I think with uh, a little bit of coaching, that'll give me just that, that little nudge that I need to finally do it. The past three matches have been extremely close. Eddie just barely squeaked by with a victory. So I'm pretty confident with the, with the help I'm going to get from, from DJ that I'm finally going to be able to prove that I am the better man on the pickleball court. <laughs> so uh, you ready to get started? Absolutely. I'm happy to help. Nice. Thank you. Let's do this. All right. <laughs> All right. Yep, to be continued. So that, that's all you get right now. That's all you get. Just a little glimpse. But man, we covered some great stuff. And uh, I feel more confident than ever that I am going to absolutely destroy you in the next Eddie versus Webby match. <laughs> I hope so. I hope uh, I hope you do, man. Because all that means is that as I'm getting better, you're getting even more better than me. Uh, and I'm totally good with that. More better, he says. 
more better. That just shows like I'm even better at uh, at grammar. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. <laughs> You're a better grammar -er person. Uh, no, that's cool. No, I'm seriously, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm excited yeah, to see what you and DJ come up with for sure. That'll be good stuff. Yeah, it was awesome. It was a great time, and uh, I'm excited to to show off some of the stuff that we that we did. Um, I'm thinking maybe every once in a while on the podcast, I'll show another little snippet of a. A different topic that we went over something like that um okay. but yeah it, it was very cool and like i said anybody that's ever even thought of getting some training uh doing those level up pickleball camps just you've got to try it you've got to do it it is so beneficial like it's it's like um, until you've actually gone through it and done some training i think it's hard to like really understand like how valuable it can be so uh yeah highly recommended i agree Good stuff. Um, what else we uh, we got to talk about here today? Well, I don't know. Did you have something else to talk about? <laughs> um, something. What, what's um? I know we have a couple potential podcasts coming up here. You want to talk about one that we have coming up here in uh, a few yes. weeks? How could I yeah. forget. This is awesome. Like it's it seems like we don't prepare for these things. We do prepare sometimes, and I just ignore our preparation. Yeah, that we he do has the sometimes. notes in front of him and everything. I put these nice notes together, and he just ignores them. That's right. No, but seriously, um, coming up on June twentieth, that is a date that you guys want to put on your calendar. It is going to be an awesome night for us here on the Eddie and Webby Show. Um, not only are we going to have Steve Peranto, uh, another a, a great. Pickleball player. He's been in the game for a very long time. He's also a fellow podcaster. Uh, but on June 20th, we are going to have Steve Peranto on our show. And later that same evening, we are actually going to be on Steve's show. So oh, yeah. it's going to be pretty epic. It's going to be a night of, uh, it's going to be Pickle Podcast Thursday, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> uh, Pickleball yeah. Podcast Thursday is what I meant to say. Man, live live stuff, like sometimes it's just, it's easy to, to mess up your words. I, I think Pickle no, Podcast is fine. I, I mean, it works. Yeah, Pickle Podcast. That sounds totally fine. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So yeah, June 20th, an epic Pickleball Podcast Thursday that you're definitely not going to want to miss. And due to the fact that both shy, both shows are done live, you all have a chance to interact with us and ask questions during the broadcast live. So as always, during our show, you can send us messages on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, uh, however you can think. Uh, carrier pigeon, isn't that one of the <laughs> methods we accept? Smoke signals. Stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anything you want to do in that regards. And then uh, on Steve's show, he takes live calls. It's the first ever live call-in podcast. So yeah, you could call in talk to us and uh, man that's gonna be super fun i can't wait and i'm actually a little bit nervous though because the more i think about it like i don't i don't know what to talk about about, about myself like somebody's gonna ask us questions about ourselves that's gonna be kind of weird <laughs> yeah it will be kind of weird i i don't think i'm gonna have an issue with it i like to talk about myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it, it should be it'll be fun it's gonna be an awesome time so yeah so mark it on your calendar june 20th steve peranto will be on our show and then later that same night Eddie and Webby will be on Steve's show. It's going to be a great time. Yep. Be there or we'll find you. You better believe that. <laughs> well, Be there or be square. <laughs> That's what some people say. Some people like to say that kind of thing. Some people do. Not me, though. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, this was episode 41. So I definitely want to thank all 41 listeners that we have out there. We know who you are. You know who you are. We love you. And you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for that. Don't yes. forget, stay tuned. Because as soon as we go dark with this, literally seconds later, we're coming right back up with, what's the show, Webby? It's called Dinking Around with Eddie and Webby. That's right. It's everybody's favorite post-podcast podcast where we let somebody join us. And that could be you. Yes. Not not you. No. You. You could join us. All you got to do is have a a phone or laptop with a good internet connection. You need to have headphones, preferably with a microphone, but as long as you have headphones, that's really all that matters. And uh and a is your, if your device has a camera, that is great because then we can see you and the world can see you. You can chat with us and it's going to be a great time. The show is super fun. It's totally unscripted. We never know what's going to happen and you got to you got to check it out. 
Yep. Stick around. We'll be there in just a few seconds. But on that note, I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. See ya.